we're going to go from tasks to role to workflow to applications. I really do think um, the way applications built is going to change. If you think about right now, all the data platforms, everyone's going through a modernization and adding agentic mm -hmm. architecture to all the data platforms. But applications for the most part, like enterprise applications we use, still human click, you know, you have to memorize 26 buttons and the sequence of the 26 buttons in order to do something. I don't think that's going to last. I think what's going to happen is people are going to move towards a point where the applications are agentic as well, which means the applications are going to be 100% profits, right? So today in Salesforce, for example, I might be, I might look at one page and click on four reports. John might look at four other pages and click on 16 different reports. Salesforce has to build all those pages and all those reports to ship this one big monolithic app. But what if John can just say, hey, this is all I want to see today? the two reports. What if I say, hey, I just need these two buttons today. Um, just imagine, just think about the UI and the UX for application development. That fundamentally changes now, right? It, it may not even persist longer than a day. It may not even persist longer than a use case anymore. So I am, actually do think that application development will be the next frontier, right? As we start getting really good at the tasks, really good at the roles, really good at the workflows. It's only a matter of time, right? If the data platforms are already agentic and applications have to feed off that, I think that's what's coming next. And when that happens, it will change how we all work uh, because we consume applications, not just at work, but also in our personal lives. Yeah. Ironically, I've already seen applications where you, you just talk to it and tell it, hey, I want to know how did the West region do last year you know, versus this year? And it just gives you that information in a graph or whatever. It's like, that's, we're already there. On that, I suspect at some point, not too far in the future, you're going to be like, uh, I really wish I had a program that did this. Could you just... No, no, you so, are... so it, it's not just answering the question. Imagine if you said, this is what I want my CRM to look like. So build your right, CRM. I wish, your I wish this CRM. program that I had did this thing, and it doesn't. Right. Can, you, can you just add that? Yes, that, that's where I think yeah. it's going, right? Yeah. And also, I think, like, uh, I think, Paige, someone mentioned that so new internet also is possible, right? Like right now you are browsing through stuff uh, and, and basically how about a future where you are actually just, you know, like chatting. I mean, just like what you're saying, instead of so many button clicks, it's that you're chatting and then, you know, you're talking about the travel plans and it generates a travel plan and books the travel plan. And actually uh, uh, OpenAI operator actually showed that demo in terms of, and it's, it's quite limited now and it, it's a bit dangerous. So you have to take control at times. Um, but that that future, just imagine the future, it's, I mean, yes, apps, enterprise apps, but the whole internet uh, is, is different. Yeah, I think there's already like web technology that, go ahead, David. I just think there's already web technology, you know, the, the web pages manifest themselves, you know, that they don't exist until you, you go there. But, you know, I think what we're going to see is, you know, more autonomy, obviously more personalization. And I think adding this guardrails or self-healing, I'll call it, you know, so it's going to be able to recognize potentially when it screws up or it's overstepping its bounds and, and yeah. hopefully self-correct and, and when to engage a, a human. I think we'll see a step from trying to figure out where we insert AI to trying to figure out where we insert a human. So that that shift will will be an in Asia. Yeah, one one interesting way to think about it is as as people are saying like SaaS is going to go away, replaced by agents. All the ERP systems are going. to... I don't think these things are going to go away. I think agentic AI is going to be the orchestrating layer on top of all of these. Right, agents will go and call your SaaS application. They'll call your CRM, like you know, Agent Force is doing right already, trying to do or your ERP, and then say, okay, let me collect this information to find out your customer's lifetime value. Now let me go into marketing documents and find out what is the best marketing offer for that customer, right? So being able to orchestrate across your structured data, your SaaS systems, your databases, your document files, you know, your like tribal knowledge with people, right? People are so critical. Putting it all together as a team, as a multi-agent system, right, with humans and software agents. I think that's where the magic happens. And I, I do see us very, very rapidly going there in the next, like, maybe two to three years. Yeah, and I think, you know, the one of the good points there, Unmesh, because one of the things people forget is that organizations are 
in flight. You know, you cannot stop an organization and say, okay, now let's stop all these legacy applications. Let's move to AI agents. And that's what happened. Like if you uh, look at mainframes, we still do have mainframes. The only thing like Unmesh, like you said, it has gone to the back end and then we are developing newer things. So yeah, I think that, that that's probably a scenario we're looking at where agents, and that's why I'm bullish about agentic process automation is because it can, within a workflow, you know, work across uh, these uh, applications and, and workflows. One, one interesting use case I'm kind of discussing with a couple of CPG retailer companies is, would you be able to model as in, individuals, right, our own sort of digital twin or agent and then companies will actually have their replicas and then people will not necessarily interact with the systems, their agents will, right? So if I want to set up a meeting with David, right? Our agents will talk to each other. They'll refer to their own calendars, preferred modes of communication, negotiate and say, hey, David and Anmesh, you guys are meeting at this time using this link on, on Zoom or whatever, right? So we are not spending time on doing the run of the mill stuff, right? We are actually letting the agents do a lot of it and we are having the more you know, hopefully, more intelligent, more interesting conversation than the Asian. Well, you know, I, I think I think if you, if that got applied to personalized marriages, uh, that might lead to a lot of divorces. So be be careful there, my friend. <laughs> yeah, but I actually I mean, like you know, being applied for, for dating systems and stuff, right? Matching. You mean you actually wanted to talk to me? What? Well, I was gonna say I just did a thing on LinkedIn, Deep Fake Dave. So I cloned myself. So Deep Fake Dave, you could meet with him and like I don't know. I don't know where I fit in this whole equation anymore, but it is it is quite interesting. Yeah. AI, AI agents now have uh, their own language that they can communicate with each other if one of them happens to be talking to the other one and they realize they're both AI. They just switch the language that's easier for them.